questions I often get asked is, how should I track my ovulation? There are many different ways and there are scientific ways like ultrasounds and, and blood tests and then there are ways that you can do at home. And what, one of the ways that I prefer and that I find that we gain so much information from for my patients in my practice is actually basal body temperatures because it really will, you know, by you taking your, thermo your temperatures with a thermometer every day and you can just do it orally, so literally thermometer in the mouth, under the tongue, close the mouth, wait until the thermometer beeps and then just track down the actual temperature and the time that it was taken. One of the, the apps that we use in the practice that I really like is called Fertility Friend and it's fertilityfriend.com. Their free app is really educational, it's very useful, it's simple to use. And you know, by you doing it every single day, ideally at the same time of the day, you will get a pattern. And typically, the pattern looks like you know it's kind of odd in the first half of the cycle, then it dips further, goes up and it stays up. You know, and it's kind of like this zigzag look uh, on the first half and on the second half. When you have that dip and that rise, you know that ovulation has occurred. Now the great thing about temperatures is that if you have temperatures that are very much all over the place or it takes a long time from the temperature dip to the temperature rise to occur, we know that there are hormonal imbalances that are going on and that there are things that need to be done about it. Also, if the temperatures are way too low, you know, on a Celsius uh, temperature gauge, if we're looking at 36.3 is where you want the temperatures to kind of be around the first half of the cycle as much as possible, and then it goes up to about 36.5. That's the optimum range, the textbook kind of range of normal. So that's what we're looking for in, in a temperature chart. And by having that understanding of what's happening throughout the whole month, what's great is that after a couple of months, maybe two or three months, you start to really understand your own body's pattern of when ovulation occurs. And if your cycles are lengthened, for example, you will start to get to understand the cycle that your own body goes through every given month. And that is a really great way of getting to know your body, how your body's working, and sometimes how it's not working and, and what needs to be improved and optimized. The wonderful thing about it though is that although it won't, won't be predictive of ovulation, the best way to predict when ovulation is going to, is going to be a, a happening or about to happen is actually going to be through cervical mucus that you check at the mouth of the vagina. But ultimately, if you are checking your temperatures, your, your secondary symptoms with your temperatures and charting it all in one place, you will start to see patterns, not only from your cervical and secondary symptoms, but from your temperature symptoms that really will give you some great insights as to when ovulation is happening. As I was saying before, temperature is not predictive, but it's a great gauge for us to have a look and see what has happened in the past and to be able to have a bit of a sense of forecasting in the future. Cervical mucus, on the other hand, is fantastic for helping to, when it becomes very egg white-like, you know, it's very stretchy, um, you start to be able to actually know that, okay, ovulation is approaching, right? And then that's what you use. Typically that very stretchy mucus, like you could take it and go like that, is how stretchy it can actually become, you know, when you're actually about to ovulate. When that happens, you know, okay, ovulation is about to happen, cue the husband or partner or a friend or whoever it is that's helping you to conceive and, uh, and get started on baby making because that's going to very much be the time that you're going to have the best possible chance. And that can happen at different times throughout the month and charting is going to be the best way to know exactly when that's happening. So I hope that helps and uh, happy, you know, baby making. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you.